Uh, welcome back to the channel. In today's lesson, we are going to create a new job in PlanSwift. We're going to show you the different parameters. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about the dialog box, what things you have to fill in and what things you probably don't. We will probably put off scaling of plans uh, for the next uh, lesson just because we don't want it to go too long. Let's get started on creating a new job. If you have come into PlanSwift and you don't have a job open, uh, like we told you before, you'll see the splash screen. I always just go right around it and go right to my home button. I spend so much time on the home tab that uh, that's where I start at. Uh, I'm only going to have two choices with no plan loaded. So uh, the first thing to do is to click on New. You're going to get a dialog box that shows up that's going to have several fields in it. A few of the fields are mandatory. You need to have some selection in there and some of them aren't. So let's talk about that. The first field is the job quote number field. Now that is mandatory and that entry needs to be unique. So whatever naming convention you like to use for your quotes or your proposals, I use the same for my uh, for setting up a new job. So um, as long as it's unique, and be any combination of letters or numbers. Now for me, I use my initials and a space. So you can use spaces in there. I know some things you can't, but in PlanSwift you can. I'll use today's date, which is uh, February 6th, 02, 06. And then I'll put a sequence number in for the ones I'm doing today. This is my first one of the day, so I put in a one. And that's a unique number, which you can look up in PlanSwift later. You can actually search for a number in later. So what name or number or combination you put in here, it doesn't matter as long as it is unique. I tab over under description. I like to use the name of the project, uh, whatever client has asked me to do. So this may be uh, the XYZ terminal. Helps if I can type. And there again, that does not have to be unique. Sometimes I'll have several iterations of the same job site. And as long as I use the unique job quote number, it doesn't matter what I put in the description. I tab over and, and for notes, there again, you can put anything you want in there, spaces, whatever. But if you do like I do and you put the client in, then you can set up your search to search this notes field that way, when you're looking for, uh, let's say you know you quoted a particular client something, but you can't remember the name or the quote number, you can do a search for that client, and under the search, all the jobs for that client will pop up. So the notes field is searchable, just like any of the others, any others, any other of the fields. Under uh, job location, it's asking you where you want to save the job. Uh, the normally default is local. Uh, and so unless you set up alternate folders, you won't see another, it'll only give you a local, you won't have another choice. I've set up uh, other places that I can save work at, and we'll talk about that later in settings when we get the settings portion of it. So I set up a folder called training, and it's just a, basically a path, that path being on the local drive. Um, we get to uh, measurement type, unless you're... Uh, Outside of the U.S., you're probably going to be using English or what they call imperial. There again, feet and inches versus versus millimeters and meters. So English simply means feet and inches. Uh, down at the bottom, it's going to tell you where it's storing the folder. Uh, you don't, you can't change it from here. It's just an information. So the next dialog box is going to show you the last place you looked at where you store your plans. It does remember that, so that, that's kind of good that if, you're, if you've got one place you store your plans, it's going to go to that folder or directory. In this case, I set up under my Documents folder um, a training uh, folder for just putting plans in. Now, you can put the plans wherever you want to uh, when you download them. You can have them on a server, you can have them on your local drive, you can have them on a thumb drive. It really doesn't matter where your original plans are because PlanSwift is going to import those files in. They're going to copy them, convert them, whatever, and they're going to be stored locally. So um, if you store them on a server like I do at work, 
that's fine. It, it's going to bring them all in and copy them and be there for local use and not do anything to the plans that's all on the server. And talk about these two examples. Uh, first, individual plan sheets. Generally, when you download plans, they're either going to come in one version or another. They're either going to be individual sheets, and they may be in different folders, and they may all be in the same folder, or they're going to be a compiled PDF, which is basically uh, individual drawings that they've used some binding program, like Bluebeam or something else, to put them into a singular PDF file. The difference is what PlanSwift does with them. So uh, if it sees them at individual files, it allows you to either click all the files, as you see what I'm doing here with this checkbox, or just select the ones you want. Now I prefer this because that way I can only select I can select just the disciplines I'm needing, whether it be architectural, structural, plumbing. I don't have to worry about the mechanical, electrical, and anything else that, uh, that I'm not, uh, I don't need to look at or, or do a takeoff on. So this is the best example. If you can get the sheets individual and let PlanSwift just select those ones and bring them in. So, uh, and we're just going to say next. That's really all you have to do to get to the next dialog box. This is important. PlanSwift likes to convert the PDF files to TIFF and actually says recommended in there. And if you try to uncheck that, you will see that you get a dialog box and it'll give you a little short sentence here or paragraph about why they want to do it that way. I can tell you from using PlanSwift for well over 15 years that uh, PlanSwift does a better job converting PDFs to TIFF. And it all has to do with the scaling. I won't go, that, that's a five or ten minute discussion right there. But my recommendation is to leave it, let plans with the convert to PDF files to TIFF as recommended. Uh, if you do that, then you have two other selections. If you uncheck that, then really there's no selections as far as uh, DPI and format. This DPI and format is simply for leaving that checked box checked. Um, it plans with may come up uh, as a default with 50. Uh, I'm using it so long, I don't remember what the original uh, default value was. Uh, I can tell you that my experience is 200 seems to be the best uh, version for getting the, uh, the amount of detail, and that's how solid the lines are, how critical the details are on it. Uh, versus having too much and making the plans too big and too slow to do anything with. So um, my recommendation is go with 200. You can try out other DPI resolutions, and you can actually see the how sharp things are depending on the DPI. You can always go back and you can delete a sheet or drawing and bring it back in at a higher DPI if it's not high enough. 200 for me works most of the time. Next selection is format. Now, back in the day, I'd always bring things in in grayscale because some things would not be just black or white, and you, you would need to be able to see things like hatch lines that are sometimes shaded or in a gray. That was then. The reality now is architects and engineers are releasing more drawings that have some kind of color in it. Uh, it may be for markup purposes that something has changed in there and they're letting you know the change and, and they're letting you know through a color. Uh, you also could get marked up drawings from a general contractor that's basically describing this is what he needs you to quote and he marks it up in color. So my recommendation is uh, even though PlanSwift may default may be grayscale is to Check on that little arrow, and you'll see the selections. And I always go down to True Color 32-bit. Over the years, since I've been using the color ones, I found that just gives the best rep representation of colors. And I've seen no detriment to uh, size or uh, performance by using the True Color 32. So my recommendation, 200 DPI and True Color. The other boxes, we'll discuss at another time. Basically, the defaults are fine that PlanSwift gets you. The only thing I need to do after selecting uh, True Color is to go to Next. 
Plants with dust didn't stop at some point, not sure why, to tell you that it's ready to create your new job. Just click finish and you'll see it. You'll see a progress bar going across there. The more sheets you've got to load or the more detailed the sheets are, the longer it will take. I've sometimes seen plants would take several minutes to load a large job. Um, it's just the way it is. Most jobs, as you can see with this one, I had, what, five plans, and it only took a few seconds. When it comes up, it's going to show you the view on the first page. And looking over to the left, and we talked about in our last video about how it lists the sheets or drawings on the left side under the Pages window. We've got no bookmarks established, that's, so that's blank. And if we change from our, on the right side, from our templates to our takeoff summary, we see that the takeoff summary is also blank. We haven't done any takeoff yet, so this is very typical of what you'll see. If we go to the other drawings, they're pretty much the same thing. They're all going to list, as, list themselves as being not to scale. They'll tell you the original page size, uh, in this case 42 by 30, um, and pretty much nothing else because it, it just knows it's a plan. It doesn't know the size of the plan. There are no, uh, there's no takeoff yet on them, so we're not seeing anything else but the basic drawing. Let's go back to this first page, and you'll see that I purposely did some markups on this A021 demolition plan to show you how and why it's good to pick color. So. Uh, let's pretend that this came from the architect and for whatever reason he was highlighting this information and highlighting notes that he needed you to pay attention to. There again, if it was in gray, it would look just like the gray I've got here on these existing walls and you might not know why that's this, that these, this yellow corresponds to the yellow over here. So again, recommendation is uh, do it in the highest color that you can uh, work in. I like the true color. And that's pretty much it for this session. We've brought in new drawings, and we've seen them. We've checked them. They all look, uh, they don't, we don't see anything corrupted. So the next thing we would do is we would select the drawings that we want to scale. There's no reason scaling all the drawings if you're not doing a takeoff on it. And why scale them? Uh, we may have them, leave them in here as for reference, uh, which is usually a, something that I do. But I like to scale the drawings individual because when you get through architectural and engineering, and even in, it, even in the architectural drawings, you'll find that most of the drawings change scales frequently. So scaling them all at one, at one size is not good. Scaling them individually is the way to go. And we're going to do that in our next session. So that's all for now. See you next time.